Market Update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. You need this market update more than ever. Coming soon, premium products on Discord and NFTs. Unhinged Crypto, Crypto Noble, we are rocking. You're not going to want to miss it. Now, speaking of missing it, legacy, falling apart, bonds, stocks. Oh, my God. What does it mean for crypto? I'm going to tell you what it means for Bitcoin. I'm going to tell you what it means for Ethereum. And here's a hint. There's two different meanings, meaning Bitcoin has one scenario and Ethereum might have another. It's radical. Don't go anywhere. Now, also, if you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to the channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live and hit the like button. That is the best way to support the channel, the like button. Bull Runner is here. Hello. Bull Runner, I'm going to dive into the bond market today as best I can to help everybody out. Appreciate you coming in and giving me the feedback that people may want more bond market color. Okay. Northern California, G Money 79. Welcome. Liking the alpha on the show. Fud, get about it. A lot more crypto, Jeff, Bill for president. Damn, I would love to. Mr. G, Silas, Raj, Reverend Flashback, John, AZ, Telmo, Tina Lee. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. All right, news. Let's get it. Let's get it. Now, one of the things you're going to hear a lot about is that Web3 is dead. Everybody's investing in AI. Everybody is investing in AI. And if everyone's doing the same thing, it's wrong. Okay? So we have the friends Reebok collaborating sneakers featuring an NFT character. Everything that you buy in retailing from now until Christmas is going to have a Web3 component. Because if you don't have a Web3 component, you're not going to be able to get Gen Z's attention. You're not. Matter of fact, you may not be able to get anybody's attention, especially with AI. It's funny. Everyone thinks Web3 is dead because of AI. I think Web3 is going to wake up because of AI. Because if you have sneakers, I mean, what are you going to have? Nike GT, GPT? What are you going to have? How are you going to get AI? How are you going to get a special techno twist? Web3, NFTs. NFT volume has gone to zero. The NFT market is dead. A perfect time to do NFTs. Oh, did I say that? Whoops. I'm going to try. Toby's working on it as we speak. It's unbelievable. Okay. Board Ape and Animoca brands cross path with crypto fighting game. Oh my God. What a novel idea. A karate game, which is old school, matched with new school NFTs. Right. It's funny how like sudden decline in prices spurs innovation. Necessity is the mother of invention. Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders demand crackdown on crypto tax evaders. Kind of like how the government borrowed $1 trillion since they lifted the debt ceiling in April. And if you want to know why the bond market is defecation derby, it's because the government has to issue basically another trillion in a very small period of time. So we're going to do two trillion in four months. And, you know, Elizabeth and Bernie want into your MetaMask as if that's going to solve the problem. It's not. Okay. Elizabeth and Bernie are forgetting that their voter base are the voters that want to be free. They want to be free from all the things that they don't like, like Reaganomics, right? Like even free markets or the Fed, right? They don't want that. Their audience doesn't want that. They want something different. They want a socialist, hippie, decentralized world. And these guys are worried about crypto taxes because they got nothing else to talk about. 
right? Meanwhile, the rest of Congress is like, hey, how can we get crypto voters to vote for us, right? Elizabeth Warren, I get it. Bernie, I'm kind of disappointed, right? I'm kind of disappointed about Bernie. Coinbase enlists Coca-Cola Atari ahead of base mainnet launch. I'm going to tell you something, folks. This base mainnet thing, like for all the trouble that Coinbase is going through, I'm kind of wondering if this is like a Uniswap disruptor, right? And I'm, I'm also wondering if like, if there's a lot of legacy turmoil and this, you know, base launch gets overhyped and then comes back down, whether or not like that's something you should be looking at. Okay. Yeah. Coinbase going decentralized. Very intriguing to me. Okay. Megan wants a crackdown on congressional insider trading. You know, I actually worked with a guy who went to jail for alleged insider trading. His name was Mike Kimmelman. He wrote a book about what it was like to have the FBI kick down his door because he sat three seats down from somebody on a trading floor who was doing it. Okay. And he had to go to jail because he wouldn't confess and he wouldn't, you know, sign and take some deal. You know, he was a really brave dude. It's amazing what congressmen can get away with. And you know what? I hope RFK Jr. comes in and kicks their ass and gets their house in order. Now, if he doesn't, I don't care. And I'm going to tell you why. Because all you need is for Megan to hang out with her friends and say, I'm sick of the system. I'm sick of congressmen being able to make millions of dollars when I can. I'm sick of them trying to take my crypto away. And if Megan has the conversation and Pancakes and Peanut Butter has a conversation and Double AM and G Life and Brick Dreams, they all have the conversation. One day you wake up and you have the dawn of crypto. You have the Satoshi white paper and Vitalik's vision coming through. Now, we may go into this later, but Bitcoin's going to have a little bit more trouble breaking free. I think altcoins and Ethereum may have a little bit of an easier time, believe it or not, because Bitcoin is temporarily in bed with equities. As much as I would like to say, oh, Bitcoin forever. I was like, Toby, come on. Tell me Bitcoin's going to detach right now. It's like, no, oh, Bill, sorry. Right. We're still waiting for the harvest. That video is coming out soon. You know, you're not going to want to miss it. Even if you hate it, if you hate it, you need to listen more because the woman hasn't been wrong about anything yet. Okay. Congress creates a storm over crypto legislation. Hey, now guys with bow ties who want to get elected are catering to crypto. Hmm. You may have heard something like that from one of your favorite market commentators. Oh no. Chinese police versus web three. Okay, Chinese want to centralize everything. You know, there used to be a bumper sticker when I was in college. It said, communism only killed 50 million people. Let's give it another chance. <laughs> you know, these guys have opened up Hong Kong to crypto trading. That article is somewhere in here. And that actually may be extremely bullish. Remember when everyone's like, oh my God, Hong Kong is coming. Yeah, it, it is. The Chinese want anything that humiliates the dollar. I'm okay with that because that's a free market mechanism, but I am definitely not okay with these guys leading the way and creating some sort of example of a totalitarian state using crypto. Now, yeah, whatever. They're going to go do it and bad guys are always going to be bad and we're bad too and blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, folks, it's about crypto. It's about freedom. It's about the things that you always wanted to have and you will have, okay? Because the only, the only thing stopping from crypto, the only thing stopping crypto from going out right now is like a limiting belief inside the financial system that crypto is tied to other risk assets. Now, it may be in the short term, but I'm telling you, I'm looking, I'm trying to find the white swan. Not the black swan. The black swan is legacy melts down. That's probably going to happen at some point, and I'll tell you why. But I swear to God, the dawn of crypto is coming. 
I told you in July to stay away for PL destruction. Now I'm telling you to get involved, get awake, get aware, get involved. Okay. Elon tweets and Twitter bot spam influences altcoin prices, according to a study. Fascinating how this is what the media has to write about crypto. Like I know Jesse has to make a living here. I get it. I used to be a journalist. Okay. But everything in crypto is manipulated is this is like a, a, a lighter version of what Gary Gensler said. Crypto elf of Rivendell says uranium. You see if I can take a look at that later on, right? Commodities, hard assets of which crypto is concluded. Metcalf's law, right? Is a fundamental principle used to comprehend the network effect of communications such as cryptocurrencies and blockchain networks. Folks, correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, but Metcalf's law is like when they start using it and they get rolling on it, that usage can get parabolic. It can get parabolic and all it takes is one big wake up call for everybody to pump up the jam. I'm telling you, I haven't been this excited about crypto in a long time particularly with, you know, I was lucky enough to have the call on the bond market. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on. I know you need help. I'm going to try to explain it to you. But the usage of crypto, like somebody said, hey, what can I do with crypto if I don't have a lot of money? Well, I said, well, take a look at a meme coin and try it like Harry Potter. You know, not investment advice. Try Litecoin, try Bitcoin, try just getting involved and see how it moves relative to your 401k, which I think you should think about adjusting. Just saying. Okay. Just saying. Crypto hedge funds will shake up the industry, crypto long and short. So in crypto, they want to be long certain things and short another. It's a popular strategy in the equities world. Like if oil's going up, there'll be long oil, short industrial stocks that use oil, right? Now crypto traders think that they can be, you know, I don't know, long Bitcoin, short Doge or vice versa, right? Crypto hedge funds, crypto hedge funds are not the thing that's going to drive the market higher. The thing that's going to drive the market higher is the macro hedge funds. It's going to be Dalio, Tudor Jones, Druckermuller, all these huge guys, when they cover their profitable legacy trades, they're going to be sitting at their desk and going, man, what's the next big beta trade? You know, if stocks go down 20% or bonds crash or whatever, you know, the, the next trade that all these big guys do is going to be in crypto. Double AM wants a thousand likes. If I got a like for every viewer of the market update, I would get there. I would get there. Okay. Malik is here a little bit late. Malik, you're never too late. You're never too early. You're right on time. Bitcoin ETF approval odds just got better. You know what? Can I just say something? I hate this whole Bitcoin ETF thing. I know crypto Twitter needs something to talk about. I know that they want Gary Gensler to bow down at the altar of crypto and let us all do Bitcoin in peace. I get it, right? Uh, somebody sees a 65% chance, chance of a spot Bitcoin ETF. People, I have a question. If you have a spot Bitcoin ETF and everybody goes to take delivery of all that Bitcoin at the same time, where are they going to get it from? Where are they going to get it from? Right now, you have miners who don't want to borrow money in legacy at 6 or 7%, selling Bitcoin to Michael Saylor, which is why the market is dead, right? And that's how Bitcoin is like moving around in a confined space. But once that's over, I mean, where are they going to get all this Bitcoin from? Well, they're probably going to have to take over miners, right? And who knows what happens to MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy could go to the moon. You have a bidding war for all that, that company with all that Bitcoin. I don't understand where they get all the Bitcoin from if you have a spot ETF. <laughs> and I guess if Gensler approves it, Bitcoin would go to 100K. And why does the administration want Bitcoin at 100K when the BRICS countries are taking every shot at the dollar that they can, especially with the bond market falling apart? 
I wasn't a big fan or wasn't a big worrier about what the BRICS countries are doing. I've changed my mind more on that in the PowerPoint, right? TradFi giant wants the crypto ETF race. You know, everybody wants in. Nobody wants to get left behind. Well, you know, hopefully he approves it, right? If he doesn't approve it, there's going to be a disappointment trade. And let me tell you something. If there's a stupid disappointment trade about the Bitcoin ETF that nobody cares about, okay? Nobody cares because you there's a Bitcoin ETF out there right now. It doesn't track Bitcoin as well, but who cares? I, I know people want this because the SEC, they want them to bow down. But we don't need it. We don't need it for crypto to go up. Here's another thing. We need Web3 without wallets. I agree. And, you know, it's going to be a phone. It's going to be the Solana phone. I know nobody likes Solana, but, you know, Tim Cook is three steps behind Samsung. You know, he's not going to, he's not going to try to leap over everybody else and mess up his contacts with the government by putting a Bitcoin wallet into an iPhone. He should, but you know, somebody's going to do it. There's going to be an Ethereum phone or a Solana phone. It's going to happen. And that's when it all, that's when it all works. When the phone itself is a wallet. And it becomes more intuitive for people. You have your music, your Apple Pay, and your crypto in your phone. Okay. Crypto traders might want to track Ether slippage. Okay. Short-term trends changes in the second largest cryptocurrency this year. Okay. So what is this telling us? Data track shows spikes in slippage in the Ether market frequently. Mark price peaks and troughs. Okay. So basically what they're saying is uh, you can't buy at the high and you can't sell at the low because everyone is panicking either way. And the fact that you occasionally don't have liquidity in ether is disturbing. That's disturbing, right? And this is another reason why I want everybody awake. I want all hands on deck. I want you to try to have a position, try to buy a dip, try some trades. Because I'm telling you right now, if you sit around and wait and go, oh, wow, look, crypto's decoupled. It's already gone, right? Now, we could have an equities crash. I don't want to get too crazy. Bitcoin's not going to decouple from stocks based on our work. Not right now, okay? But that doesn't mean you can't get ready now. That doesn't mean you can't try to get involved. Trade a little, okay? It's not investment advice. It's educational advice. AI investment could reach $200 billion globally by 2025. Generative AI has huge economic potential. Okay, sure, it does. You know, you can do my homework. It can write my book. You know, you can do all kinds of things. We're having fun making YouTube thumbnails and cranking out videos on two different, thumb, two different YouTube channels and Twitter all at the same time, I'm 53 years old and I wouldn't be doing anything without my producer and the AI stuff he's taught us. But isn't the axiom, if everyone's doing the same thing is wrong, doesn't that apply, right? Doesn't that apply? Rave Song Records wants me to give more than one like. I appreciate that. You know, anybody can hit the like button on their phone. Or on their or on their desktop later on, I think. But for Rave Song Records, man, I'll take your like and I will be grateful for it. Marathon Digital solidifies his position as the world's largest publicly traded miner. Okay, these large publicly traded miners may wind up being less levered, and they know people are coming after them. They know that if they get their house in order, somebody's going to come in and take over their company. And that's where management gets rich. Their job is to create shareholder value. Stable coins, a potential counter to de-dollarization. People, the counter to de-dollarization is not a stable coin. It's Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a robust financial system that is either a quasi-replacement for legacy or runs parallel to legacy. Right? If legacy gets a flat tire, people can go to crypto. That's the counter to de-dollarization. The other counter to de-dollarization is having crypto industry be in the United States and not Hong Kong. In other words, 
The dollar will be okay if innovation about money is here and not there. NFT trading volume is sinking, but it's not stopping developers. Good. NFT trading volume is sinking. The market has gone to zero. And Toby right now is working on an NFT collection. Right? So for better or for worse, I'm getting into the game and I want to get you in at the bottom. That is coming as soon as we can. All right. Latin American crypto company launches U.S. pegged stable coin. Latin America is going to be one of the biggest hubs for the use of XRP, QNT, and any type of stable coin because they're sick and tired of the Fed jamming rates 500 basis points and messing up their economy. So, you know, some people need stable coins. This is an area where, I don't know, a, a, a digital currency that ties Latin America together the way the euro ties Europe together may be a useful solution for them, particularly since, you know, from time to time, you have currency and political crises down there. Anybody who thinks that Gensler is going to stop crypto adoption, there's so much Gensler rage, right? Richard Hart gets in trouble. Oh my God, crypto Twitter's on fire. They got to be on fire about this, about institutional and national adoption. Speaking of that, ruh -roh, Hong Kong is loose. Hong Kong is loose. Okay. You know, everybody, me, you, the Fed, Ray Dalio, Vladimir Putin, everybody knows what's going to happen. Now, the Fed also knows, so they may wind up, you know, kind of supporting stocks and bonds so it's not a disaster. And you know what I say? Good. Good. Because if you can't have stocks and bonds going lower, you're going to have the dollar lower and crypto much higher. Megan says, buy dips, slowly accumulate, when in doubt, zoom out. Exactly. And what I would say is, I would add to that, don't let legacy scare you. Don't. Right. I understand that Bitcoin may move with stocks if stocks are a calamity. But we're sitting around waiting for the day. Right. And I don't think it's going to take until the Bitcoin having for the day to show up. I mean, people, I talked about Venus in retrograde. We did that on Unhinged and my YouTube channel. Okay. You should go check that out. Right. Uh, I talked about the super moon over and over on Twitter that whatever starts near the super moon on August 1st, you know, we'll keep going until the next super moon, which is on August 30th. So we're in this rare situation where you have two super moons at the same time. So the objects in motion stay in motion, which is why I'm telling you to get involved, get involved. That doesn't mean bet the rent money. It doesn't mean put everything into a meme coin. It means, you know, buy on red, try to take a shot and see what happens. If you get caught in a stock vortex, okay. Stop yourself out, reload, come back. It's now worth trying. PL destruction is over. It's not over, right? Because it's going to be hard to trade, but being hard to trade and having to really put yourself out there is different from being in an environment where it goes nowhere and stops everybody out every day. It's different, right? It's different because it, it's got like a trend and a rhythm to it. BlockFi is inching closer to refunding clients. Interesting to see if people turn around and dump all their crypto. Be very interesting if BlockFi paid all their clients back and they hodled it. And I, I don't know why you wouldn't. The whole BlockFi thing has done forced hodling. Why, why would you sell now? Sheep developers don't want to be a meme coin anymore. And they want a new, they want a new protocol. Okay. Folks, people are building. They're building, right? The only difference is no one is trading the fact that they're building. Okay, base layer two comes out next week. This is a Uniswap disruptor. Now, 
It'll probably be reflected in the value as soon as it comes out. But, you know, I'm just thinking about like, everyone's always asking me like, what's the altcoin for the next cycle? You know, is it something that makes Ethereum work better? I don't know. Ethereum seems to work just fine to me. I'm not a technical guy. Give me something decentralized with a brand name. Give me a decentralized something, right? There's pancake swap from Binance, but Binance is never not in trouble. Give me something decentralized backed up by Coinbase's legal department. Okay. Nico is taking profits, profits taken on NVIDIA. Old Wall Street motto, you can never get fired taking profits. Binance could face U.S. fraud charge. Prosecutors worry about risk of a bank run because of Binance. Okay. So Binance being in trouble is not news. Everyone, crypto Twitter was cheering for the end of Binance, strangely, back in December. And Binance has been dying for I don't know how long, according to everybody in crypto. You know what, folks? Let them do all this. We're going to look back at all this like Richard Hart, Binance, you know, XRP. We're going to look back on all this and go, wow, these guys were really pathetic, right? They tried to stop something that was good for all of us. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. They, yeah, they, they can bring fraud charges against Binance and that, that would not be good, right? That would not be good. That could cause panic selling. And you know what? There's a lot of big players out there that are dying for that. You know, please make it go down so I can get in. Okay. Crypto's two big weeks. Interesting, right? A dozen enforcement action by the Securities and Exchange Commission. This is what is defined as a big week in crypto. No, the big week in crypto, folks, is that stocks and bonds puked and crypto didn't move. More on the bond chart in a second. WorldCoin suspended in Kenya. Thousands queue for free money. Hmm. WorldCoin. Well, can I get it? WorldCoin says it will allow companies, governments to use its ID system. Hey, everybody, want to know a reason why you should have a little bit of Bitcoin or a little bit of crypto or a little bit of something, something in the digital world? Because guess what? Big Brother disguised himself as open AI issued world coin in a decentralized mechanism and is trying to get their tentacles in everything. And you know what? They can do it because it's a free market, right? That's what the whole decentralized world is. You can go play if you want. Now, if you want to go play with these guys and get a digital identity and prove you're human. Okay. I get that. They're listening to your cell phone anyway, but any time that the world would like to start doing good stuff, like, hey, Michael Saylor, how come stuff like this? When, when are we going to build on Bitcoin? You keep buying Bitcoin, but let's build on it. What are you building on Bitcoin? Come on the show and tell me, right? Come on the show and tell me. Okay, we're going to charts. We're going to welcome who's here. Okay, we have L-U-K-L-K-C. Finally catching the show. Welcome, sir. Big Rich is here. Wrong again is right on time. Robin is here. Quarter crawler. Kansas bank failure last week. Right. There aren't going to be any more banks failing because of what's going on with interest rates. Yikes. What do you think is going to happen to bond mutual funds with what's going on in bonds? Okay. Big Rich is looking for RNDR and a little GAN analysis. If I can come up with it, I'd be happy to look into that. Okay, now we're going to PowerPoint because I know Bull Runner's been waiting to talk about bonds and I'm going to do my best to help him out with just some quick charts and try to talk about this, uh, dare I say, in English. Okay, now, by the way, revamp of this coming soon, courtesy of Toby. Now, let's talk about stocks, right? This is a log scale. This is 1987. This is 2002. This is the housing crash. This is a 12-year return move to the trend line. 
This is an attempt to break above it on massive FOMO, and now they can't get back above the trend line. So guess what? Stocks should either go down or do nothing. Now, what would make stocks go down? A rise in long-term interest rates, okay? Or let's say it differently, a decline in bonds, long-term bonds, right? ZB on trading view. Now, what makes ZB go down? What makes bonds go down? Okay. Uh, inflation out of control, which it is. Okay. Commodity prices up, bonds down. It's old school, right? If inflation is hot and the Fed can't stop it, bonds puke. Number two. When the government has to issue, issue, issue bonds, do you ever wonder how we got $31 trillion in debt? Well, here's how we do it. The government calls up banks, also known as primary dealers, and they say, dear Mr. Dealers, okay, per the rules of the game, we're going to be selling a trillion dollars in bonds, and you either got to go out and find customers to take the bonds, right, from you, like we'll give the bonds to you, and, you know, you find someone to go take the bonds, or guess what? You get stuck with them. You get stuck with them. You get stuck with them. So what does the bank do? They go to the trading desk. They go, oh my God, they're going to hit us with a trillion dollars in bonds. I'm going to be standing there holding this bag. <laughs> Whatever. I'm going to go get short and crush bond futures. And that's what this was, right? I'm not going to get left holding Uncle Sam's bag. So commodity prices up, bonds down. Yeah, primary dealers with a big bag, bonds down. Okay. Now you also have credibility, right? The Fed's losing money. We're going to go over something released by Ray Dalio, conveniently sent out right before bonds collapsed. You know, Ray Dalio says, Oh, I'm just writing for my retirement. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay. Bridgewater is probably the one that slammed the market like this and is trying to like break everything. And that's, that's hedge fund playbook. But what makes bonds go down? How about big hedge funds pressing? Because the government lacks credibility. Government credibility helps, hurts. I'm sorry, government, lack of government credibility helps explain bond prices falling. Now, our government credibility is in question because we're borrowing absurd amounts of money. President of the United States is obviously not well, but is still in power because they don't want the vice president in charge. It's kind of sad, right? Not to mention everyone's trying to kill the currency. It's not a good recipe. It really isn't. And when this payroll number comes out on Friday, you're going to probably see the wildest action of the year. And if you don't see the wildest action of the year in legacy, you may see a huge rally in crypto. You may. Because again, What's the solution to, oh my God, I'm holding this big bag of government bonds or, oh my God, oil is going up. Oh my God, I'm losing purchasing power on my dollar. Oh my God, my government has no credibility. I'm pretty sure that that's crypto. I'm pretty sure that that's crypto. Crypto, crypto, crypto. Now wrong again is asking about the yield curve. Okay. Let's go to the dollar first. Then I'll go to the yield curve. Okay. DXY. Hidden pivot structure. I have a top at 102.65. They did a wonderful job of running stops up here, which the foreign exchange fiat market is great at doing. They practically invented it. So they run all the stops, right? The stochastics diverge, new high in price, no new high in RSI, and then, pfft, right? The dollar is garbage. And this rally is a gift to just hate on it. Administration asked a popular social media app to change its algorithm in effort to control speech. You want to be free? Buy crypto. Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa to settle global trade in local currency, ditching the U.S. dollar. Okay, all countries sick and tired of wild swings because of bad fed behavior on one hand i don't blame them on the other hand these guys are not stupid they're trying to attack the dollar 
But it is interesting that the dollar did manage a rally during this disturbance period, showing that despite what yip yap these guys may say, when things get ugly, people still want the damn dollar, right? I mean, these headlines are great, okay? But they don't mean anything until the dollar goes down. And if the dollar does go down, it's not because these guys abandon it and do a natural gas trade in the dollar. The dollar is going to go down because there is less demand for the idiotic amount of bonds that we're issuing, right? These guys are not doing $2 trillion in trade. You know, maybe that happens one day, but it's got to do with bonds, bonds, bonds. Meanwhile, JP Morgan's CEO says we have the best economy in the world. Okay. Well, you know, you can go to Walmart and get pretty much whatever you want, right? You know, the shelves are stocked again. And, you know, we're blessed to be able to have what we have. However, Ray Dalio is telling you something totally different because the central banks of the world have negative net worth. That means the bonds on the balance sheets of the central banks have caused the central banks to lose money. The central banks are going Lehman. The central banks, as in the Fed, Bonus Bank, ECB, yeah, they're going Silicon Valley Bank. And as I put on a Twitter thread, you know, this is summarizing a, a big newsletter that Dalio did. Negative net worth for central banks means that the central banks owe more money than they owe, right? They owe more than they own. This could affect their ability to conduct monetary policy. How are you going to raise rates if raising rates makes you insolvent? You're not. They're done. The bond market's going to have to do it for them because it can conduct, it can affect monetary policy. And get this, I didn't get this. Kudos to Dalio for explaining it. It could make them dependent on the central government for capital injections, which can increase the budget deficit. So, Try to wrap your mind around this. How do you, when Silicon Valley Bank needs capital, the Fed prints and recapitalizes or the Treasury issues bonds and, and gives money to whatever bank it is. Well, who recapitalizes the Bundesbank, the Fed, the ECB? Where do they get it from? Well, they could print it, but that would be, oh, that would be a colossal scandal. They're going to have to either have the Treasury borrow money, raise taxes or whatever. They got to get it from the government that has no money. Fascinating, as Mr. Spock would say. <laughs> so, Jamie, everything's fine. Ray Dalio, everything isn't. I will leave it up to you to decide who to believe. Okay, yield curve. Let's talk about it in English, if possible. I will do my best. Let's share screen. Now, <clears throat> One of the things about the bond market is that, you know, bond market is a little bit like blockchain, like the blockchain guys. It's really easy for them to sort of talk over your head sometimes, right? You know, if you get a bunch of crypto programmers in a room, you know, you're talking about crypto, he's talking about crypto, but you're not following what he's saying. The same thing is true in bonds. Now, personally, I think bond market strategists are very, very smart people because fixed income mathematics or bond mathematics, you know, they, they're, they're difficult. They're, they're difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I would look at the yield curve. Okay. The yield curve is long-term rates like us 30 Y minus a shorter term rate like us 05 Y. So when the Fed hikes rates, the five-year yield goes up, short-term rates go above long-term rates, and you get the famous inverted yield curve. Let's see if I drew the inverted yield curve correctly. Okay. Oh, I did. Uh, what did I do? Okay. I did the inverted yield curve versus crude oil. Okay. Let's try it over here. All right, this is worth waiting for. So give me just a second. Okay. Now, here is the yield curve.
They just not want to cooperate today. Okay. All right. Now the yield curve is cooperating. So as you may have read, Michael Burry in the big short and every commentator in human history has told you that when the yield curve gets inverted, meaning short rates higher than long rates, you get a recession, right? And that is the worst kept secret in the whole world. Now, what really causes problems, okay, is when the yield curve goes from negative to positive. So the yield on the long bond and the yield on the five-year note are now the same. The yield curve is now uninverted via sun measures. This is called, this is called a bear steepening. Okay. It's bad. Why? Because long-term rates are rising. Normally an inverted yield curve corrects itself when short-term rates fall and the fed cuts rates, which they're not doing now. They're not doing it now. Long-term rates are rising. So when the yield curve goes above zero, it's bad. This time it's bad, right? Because people are going to long-term bonds don't have any credibility. And people inside the bond market, right? Like you're not looking at it. And I'm going to tell you what this means for crypto, but you're looking at this and going, I don't understand it. It doesn't matter. But people in the bond market are looking at it and going, oh my God, is there anybody old enough in the room to have ever seen this kind of price action? Okay. I may be the only guy that's seen this kind of price action. Even Siri is like, hey man, I don't know what that means. Now let's talk about what it means for crypto. Let me get real simple with you. All right. So this is Ethereum on a 90 minute chart. And here we go back and forth in this range between 1813 and 1865. You know, Ethereum is up and then it gets sold off, right? Because we're watching legacy, you know, stocks were down, then they were up. Now they're back down again right? ZB. Let's see where that is. ZB is getting killed, right? <laughs> I have support in ZB at 120.07. It's now at 120.10, down 1.6%. Guys, long bond futures down 1.6% is so bad. So bad. But look at Ethereum. Look at this thing. It's like nothing's happening. I am telling you this, if you have this kind of bond market price action and you have crypto not down 8% in one day, every day that that happens is a victory. Now, now you can't make too much out of any one day and celebrating crypto relative outperformance can normally lead to, you know, to, to you getting hammered. Okay. But when legacy goes down, if they, if they go below 1813 and they run stops in Ethereum, then, then that's an opportunity, right? See how Ethereum is hugging this green line at 1850. It goes above it. Then it comes back Then it goes below it. And then it comes back. And that may be the trade while legacy does the puke -thon. Okay. I mean, somebody took profits in Nvidia. Good for you, sir. You got a 13 and a nine bottom on a 90 minute chart and you get kind of sort of a bounce. Okay. You do not want to be the last person buying Nvidia. Do not buy the last dip. Everyone's like, Oh, buy the dip. Oh, okay. I mean, that's worked. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to be an idiot. It's worked, right? Tesla has worked better than any trade or any idea I've come up with. But I mean, you have a 13 top in QQQ. This is from DeMarc Combo Analysis. And I'm not exactly a big fan of this big red candle. As a matter of fact, it looks kind of like a miniature version of the one that occurred on this 13 top back in November of 2021. What's the difference? Okay, well, I'm thinking the difference is if QQQ goes down the way it did back then, or even if it goes down for like three or four weeks or into October, at some point in here, crypto, crypto, crypto. Okay, let's talk about VIX. VIX is the fear index in legacy. Okay, 
here is what VIX is doing. So we're down here. It's a 13 bottom. It's July 14th. Nothing's ever going to happen. Everything is boring. Nothing's going to happen in August. Wrong. Wrong. VIX gaps up. VIX may get to a point where equities traders may have to sell. And when they have to sell, they either have to sit in cash or they have to allocate money to different areas of technology. Okay. Now, switching gears to altcoins, let's talk about Cardano. Why not? Right. Okay. Let's play a game. Where do you want to buy your favorite altcoin? Like, what's a juicy price? You go to the altcoin car dealer and they're like, oh, they're giving you a sale. They're giving you a deal. I don't know. How about 23 cents in Cardano? How about setting it up to grab Cardano down there? RNDR. You thought I forgot about it, didn't you? No way. Okay. RNDR. You know what? They like it at $1.73. You got a 13 bottom. You got a nine bottom. They tried to wick it down right to another DeMarc point and it came back. You know what, folks? It's really kind of funny that some of these old coins, you know what? They actually look good. They actually look good. Okay, wrong again, says I have a position in BTC, 23K and ETH 1400. Hold it, take profits, or add to the position. Ooh, that's a juicy question. Okay, so <clears throat> frequently, if you're asking yourself if you should take profits, you've already answered the question, okay? So it never hurts to take some money off the table, particularly since Bitcoin is going to be impacted by equities. If you own ETH at 1400 and ETH went to 1400 or 1370, I would be like, wow, it's Christmas. I'm overjoyed. Like I would personally be more psychologically comfortable with ETH and more worried about Bitcoin only because everybody owns Bitcoin, right? So if there's something stupid that happens, there's a leveraged unwind or there's some kind of panic trade, it's probably in Bitcoin. Now, you know, I, I, I'm on here saying get rid of legacy and think about crypto. You also have to think about your head, right? In July, I told you to stay out of the market because it was choppy and would mess up your head. In August, I'm telling you to get involved and manage your head. It's different, but you know what? Managing your head and managing your sanity is still very much a part of that. You never get fired taking profits, right? There's always, there'll always be a dip, even if it just rips to the upside. My guess would be if there's a day to take profits in crypto, tactically, it may be on Friday because if bonds and stocks don't crack, crypto is going to rip to the upside. Okay. Wrong again says, leave the lampshade on the lamps. Pancakes and peanut butter wants to know if it's a local top in oil. God, you guys are just making me so like happy talking about all this macro stuff. Um, okay. Oil. So I hidden pivot structure and this is how, you know, the market's in trend mode, by the way, folks, this is how, you know, okay. When this hidden pivot stuff starts working again. Okay. This all broke for a while, okay? And now it's back. You know, you break out, you come back down to a hidden pivot level, it's $78, and this is going to 84. I think oil is, is actually, for the moment, taking the place of gold and silver. I want to get long gold and silver. Kobe's like, hey, gold is okay. Gold is still king. Silver may not perform as well. I think they're buying oil as a straight up and down safe haven trade. Uncle Sam is short oil. The strategic petroleum reserve is at zero for some strange reason. Don't get it. But Uncle Sam is definitely short oil and they're going to continue to press it higher. So right now, you know, they may be coming out of tech stocks and into energy stocks or tech stocks into commodities, right? Crypto is next. Now that said, oil back to wrong against question. Higher oil is not good for Bitcoin. Ethereum does well when commodities like grains and metals go up and the dollar goes lower. Higher oil is not good for Bitcoin, right? I was like, I did this like nine minute video with Toby. I'm like, Toby, Bitcoin's going to decouple, right? 
Toby, Bitcoin's going to decouple, right? He's like, you know what? Sorry, big boy. Bitcoin's going to have its day, but it's not today. It's not today. And the Bitcoin maximalists don't want to hear this. Legacy is melting down and Bitcoin may be more tied to legacy than it wants to be. Because everybody in legacy owns it. That's why I think Drucker Miller, Tudor Jones, and Dalio and all these guys, they may come in and buy Bitcoin, but they may come in and buy Ethereum. And don't discount what can be done through base three to four months from now. Three to four months was an eternity of adoption when Uniswap came out in 2020. Okay, wrong again is saying, will the bond market go illiquid? It's already illiquid. Woolameter is hitting the like button. I appreciate that. And the Fed, yeah, that might happen. It's going to be really interesting if the president is not the president anymore. You have somebody with very left-leaning views in power especially after some of the social issues have not gone their way. You know, the, the thought of, of left leaning people trying to co-opt monetary policy because Powell, Bernanke and Yellen all screwed up. Oh my God. You know, you want to talk about a reason to buy crypto? I mean, please. Okay. I'm looking at well, good Lord. I got a DeMarc resistance point at I got a DeMarc resistance point at small print I can't read 8865 if you take out the zeros. So it looks like they're coming close to where like the give up slump started. But what's happening here is that it's rushing up to resistance but it's not backing off. So whatever this is, uh, it looks like they want it. Let's look at the weekly. Wow. Look at this, right? Nine bottom, right? It tries to start counting the other way, fails on the four and goes the other way. <sighs> you know, 0 0.013 is possible. Whatever this is, this looks like an uptrend. It's always good if I don't know what it is. Bull runner, you're welcome. Hopefully that bond market lesson worked wrong again, says, does Wall Street really trust the numbers? Okay. Well, you know, Wall Street plays a game uh, where the numbers come out, the economists try to guess the numbers, and then the market and the algorithms trade off what's expected. So economic numbers are something that algos make money off for one day. Okay. I, I, I think there's a lot of people at Wall Street who know what's really going on out there. Right. <laughs> uh, 1984, you know, what is the best way to avoid tyranny? Okay. Uh, the president of the United States blames the recent downgrade on another president of the United States. See, when we have stuff like this going on, it's an indication that people have lost credibility. We've lost credibility. Okay. You know, the administration and social media, right? Look at this line of people trying to get into the United States being shipped to New York city. It's the revenge of Texas, right? The United States invaded Europe and liberated it. It invaded Iraq and Afghanistan and turned them into actual like functioning countries, at least in terms of an infrastructure point of view, yet people trying to get into the country cannot get processed at the border. And we're supposed to buy this currency and not Bitcoin. Okay. I mean, you know, you just keep going through the news. Here are all the critical CTA prime liquidity and buyback levels and positioning. In a world where only positioning technicals and liquidity matter, here are the most important levels. Now, this is a premium article, and here's how I'm going to end this for today. The most important thing in crypto and in legacy is liquidity. Liquidity. Can you buy and can you sell? If everybody has to sell at the same time after this payroll number on Friday, they won't be able to. That includes NVIDIA, stocks, 
Tesla, S&P futures, bond futures. If everybody has to sell at the same time in August or September before the U.S. Labor Day holiday or just after, good luck with that, which is why I want you to try in crypto. Bitcoin and stocks won't be able to totally decouple, but that may not be the worst thing in the world. It may not be because if stocks don't go anywhere or bonds are done puking, just possible, the dawn of crypto happens. The dawn of crypto happens. Reverend Flashback, on August 1st, it was announced that the House Committee will investigate BlackRock's China activities. Next day, Fitch downgraded the U.S. Coincidence? Doubt it. What do I think? You know what I think? I think whatever happens on the supermoon is going to be weird. The supermoon was at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time, and like six weird things happened in two days, right? And, you know, do we really have to investigate whether or not BlackRock is the cleanest operation out there? I mean, it, they literally are the evil empire, right? But you don't want to join the evil empire. You want to be in crypto, which is why you're going to stay with the crypto YouTube channel. You're going to stay with unhinged crypto on YouTube, right? And you're going to want to stay tuned for premium premium products with whiz bang technology and GAN and mystical analysis that you cannot get anywhere else. Monday, we'll see you.